I'm Yvette Fielding and this week I brought Most Haunted to West Yorkshire and the very haunted East Riddlesden Hall. Having already witnessed the traumas that lie behind its near neighbours, Bolling Hall and the Black Bull, we thought we'd seen all there was to see in and around the Bradford area. Until now. Almost church-like in appearance, East Riddlestons Hall has stood at the centre of these tranquil grounds since the 1640s, although the surnames of its numerous owners can be traced back far further in time. A small proportion of the main house was declared unsafe and demolished a century ago before the building passed into National Trust hands in 1934. Outside lies the hall's crowning glory, a seductive and seemingly serene lake. But be warned, these waters hold hidden depths. Three souls have drowned here, the most tragic loss being a Victorian child whose curiosity killed him and whose spectre, we are told, still sorrowfully stalks East Riddlestone Hall. Now, if East Riddlestone Hall is as haunted as they say, you probably think us completely mad to ask two people to spend the night alone and in the dark here. Well, that's exactly what John Gilbert and I did last night, and this is what happened. Did you hear that? She... I'm not sure, but I could have sworn like a... Like a... Uh, like a... Is there anybody trying to communicate with us? Oh! <gasps> Don't go! What? What's the matter? Something just took... I'm sure something just touched my hand. Something just touched your hand. Something just touched my hand. Just pushed against me. I don't know what it could have been. Think, try and think rationally. It's like feeling like people are looking at you. Feeling like you're not on your own. There is a story attached to this house, and this room in particular. It's said that during the 14th century, at the time of the Plaslews, the master of the house returned home unexpectedly, only to discover his wife and her lover in bed. So enraged was he, he imprisoned his wife here in this room and starved her to death. Her lover didn't escape. His body was walled up elsewhere in the building. Since then, her groans have filled the house and her footsteps have been heard running up the stairs and across the landing, perhaps looking for her immured lover. The great chamber has a mischievous spirit in residence. Housekeepers seem to have a problem keeping the bed sheet flat. As soon as they flattened it and leave the room, it reverts back to its disturbed appearance. Furniture also likes to move, especially this cradle that rocks on its own in the middle of the night. Many visitors have reported strange occurrences here in the great barn. The sounds of children talking and playing echo through these great rafters. 
A dark presence is also known to lurk in the shadows, grabbing at unsuspecting guests. The whole area around here is absolutely interspersed with, with prehistoric standing stones. And not only that, but we've actually got three 10-mile ley lines that actually cross here in the grounds of the hall. The impressive grounds of the hall are said to be haunted by so many different phantoms. The grey lady, she's often been seen walking by the water's edge. She tragically died in a horse riding accident. The ghosts of a coachman and also soldiers have been seen roaming around the water. But perhaps the most tragic story is the ghost of a little boy who's often been seen playing by the pond. It's thought to be the spirit of Edward Johnson Horner. He died here in 1880. He drowned and he was only five. The little boy, I thought there was a school visiting because on the property we have children visit in period costume and he just looked like one of those. You, you can't be in conflict with what you see in your, with your own eyes. I mean, at that point in time, I were on the property on my own and the manager said, this little boy is left a school party and I'm frightened that he'll go near a pond. And they said, there's nobody on the property, just me and you. So we find ourselves in yet another property whose austere outwardly appearance much belies the tales of woe held within. And with a rational head required at all times, parapsychologist Kieran O'Keefe has his own ideas on what the night will hold. Do you think this location is almost like a hidden gem because of all the lo locations we've investigated? We've done over a hundred now. I've never even heard of this place and all of a sudden it's, it's cropped up and the amount of apparitions that are here, it's incredible. It is and at least with this location we know no other ghost groups have visited, no other mediums. So we're the first group here and we're going to try and find out exactly what's happened. And in addition to us not knowing about the location, it's almost impossible to do research about it and find out about people that have died here or about the previous accounts. So if David Wells were to come up with the name of the boy, anything connected to the boy, then yeah, I'd be very impressed. Obviously in all locations you do a baseline test. Did you pick anything up that was slightly different here? Given the previous accounts of people sensing a presence or sensing something there in the landing, I was particularly focusing on EMF. And I picked up very high readings of EMF over by the side window. On further examination, I think there's some sort of magnetic component within the stone material itself. What about ley lines? Would that have an effect on any of us tonight? Well, ley lines are discovered through dowsing. And as a divining tool, there is no scientific evidence to show that it works. And so for me, I have to be extremely skeptical, even cynical, of the fact that we're in a, a, an intersection of ley lines. So, have we entered a house full of tales and hysteria? Or, with the assistance of mediums David Wells and Ian Shilito, are we all destined for another night full of fear? and fright. I feel here, I feel crushed. It feels like someone's been stabbed. Who? I think it's acted by a gentleman who stands over there. Oh. <laughs> and I think this is associated with a lady. You know what, I have got a name, Madeline. She's, she's clawing and I don't know whether she's in a box and she's in a coffin and clawing. Oh. I think that he will be able to perform for us this evening. Oh, the taste of blood in my mouth as well. Do you want to kill again?
This is the latest property to fall under Most Haunted's paranormal gaze. But despite its almost immediate charm, a series of past tragedies mean we'll all have to tread carefully once darkness descends on East Riddleston Hall. This place offers us several locations to explore. So before we head into the main house with medium David Wells and guest psychic Ian Shilato, we decide to visit a 17th century structure that's said to house more than farming equipment. I'd kind of like to get right in amongst it because I feel, okay. feel like I'm just watching here. All right, well, we'll go through here, yeah? Kind of kind of aware of children playing in here, mm -hmm. but I'm really aware of um, something I'm, I'm trying to fight off is, I feel here, I feel crushed. By, by a, a spirit or presence or what, what it, is it? It's like, like someone was doing this, they were squeezing me mm. really tight, especially across here and just, just at the base of my throat. It's not a bear, but it's that kind of size and it's that the size of a bear, yeah. a big thing. Um, it's like it's putting a cloak over me. Right. Now, is it protecting me or is it threatening me? I, I can't figure that out. We'll find out later. I want to come back to these, the children. There's two actors. There's a little boy and a little girl who seem to be shining out, if you like, in my vision much more than the others. The little boy is running that way towards the lake and the little girl is over here, but she's sitting kind of... Sorry. <laughs> what was it? Was it an animal or something? The little boy is running that way towards the lake and the little girl is over here but she's sitting kind of... Sorry. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> I'm sort of reticent to state the obvious but I think the little boy drowned in the lake because he went, he went woof. So it wasn't, it wasn't he went towards the lake, he went back to the lake. Mm. Can you tell me when this little boy would have drowned, what time period it would have been? It, it would have been, um late 1800s before they, they show me these and they're sent before before cars so okay. well, these were there before cars and i know this is i'm going to ask you have you got any names yet with with this little boy uh, the, the name that's that, that sort of sorry i'm being, being attacked on the head um by all by the bear oh um the name that's coming to me everyone if it's trying to stop me go um is edward edward's the boy's name any more Nothing at the moment. There is. Yeah, there You're is. Doing that for they, 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 <laughs> say it, say it. <laughs> they show me um, Horner. It's, it's, it's like Jack Horner pulling out a thumb, and they, that's the problem. Why hasn't mm. he moved on? Why is he still here? We're back to that sort of like they still live here scenario. Right. And that's what it, it feels like to me that a lot of them still live here and the carry others. on. Yeah, it's the others mm -hmm. scenario. Yeah, okay. definitely. Mm -hmm. So was something lurking in the dark recesses of the Great Barn. We eventually managed to escape the building where children's voices are often heard to find that much more of East Riddleston's apparent paranormal phenomena lay just a few steps away. I've got more than one body in the lake, more than the boy in the lake. There's one man walking towards the house, so that's, that's just a visual prompt. They, they, what they do is they draw attention to their bits if there's been a bit of infidelity. It's been drowned for infidelity. Mm -hmm. All right. I want to just go on a bit more. Yeah, sure. A woman on a white horse, thrown, broken neck. In the water. The horse is reared up and she's been thrown from the horse and snapped her neck. Mm -hmm. I think that. I've, she snapped the neck. Actually, on the way down, she snapped the neck. The horse hasn't fallen on her at all. And did she, she, she... Do you see her standing by the lake or in the lake? She's standing by the lake. OK. And then, I mean, she might be seen there. And everything's very white, very ethereal, so she might be one of these white lady jobs. And when would this have happened? It was probably about 1700s, something okay. like that. And a name with her? It's like Margaret or Margot or, you know, something, something like that. Something beginning with them. Yeah. Okay. yeah. are always interesting for me. 
have someone sleeping on the bed on and off intermittently, so I guess it, it, they get that, that it looks like someone slept on it. You're right. There's something about a baby as well in here. Maybe this... I can see a baby in the cot and the cot rocking. OK. The baby, it's almost like the baby's got like an adult voice for oh, me. Oh, how weird. And it's, yeah, but it's only visuals. I mean, clearly it hasn't. Um, but it's going, my mother, my mother. So there's a trauma attached to its mother. What she's doing is she's presenting from cherubic faced to skeletal, mm -hmm. like an x ray, really. Mm -hmm. That's how she's presenting. Is then that a clue to her death then? Well, yeah, she's starved to death, but I, I don't know well, whether she's. She's starved to death, right. She's, cause she's clawing, and I don't know whether she's in a box and she's in a coffin and clawing. Oh. Or she's behind a wall or, or something and clawing. But do, do you have any idea why that would be? I mean, is it her choice that she's done that, or is it an illness that's caused that? No, no she's, she's, been, she's been purposely put in that situation. Right. She's basically been caught with her pantaloons around her ankles, I suspect. So it's punishment. So she was walled up or put somewhere, she's trying to get out, and she was starved to death because yeah. she was having an affair with someone. And I'm kind of putting two and two together, and I think it might be the man in the lake. The man in the lake? The, the man in the lake who came out with his... Oh, oh said yes. to you. Yeah, I think he may have been murdered, she may have been starved to death. She's 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 at the she's up here. She's at the windows and she's banging on the windows for attention and people are, are ignoring her. Taps are happening. Can you hear them? <coughs> and it's it's saying her name begins with an M. It sounds like an M and the, the surname's P. Going back to her, who has trapped her in here? I think it was her husband. OK, and was he the one that trapped her in here and eventually she died? I think so, and I think he was the one that ordered the murder of the suitor as well. So he didn't murder the suitor, he ordered... Yeah, I don't think he did it himself, cos he wouldn't have blood on his hands, I wouldn't have thought. So I think he, it wouldn't, he would, wouldn't be uncommon for him to order murder, I wouldn't think. And this horrible entity... Could he be the husband? No, he would be he would be more likely to be the murderer. That would be the more of the type of character he was. Mm. Do you want to move on? Mm. someone's been stabbed in this room. I've had it all the way around. But it's worse than ever here. That was floor boards, wasn't it? It feels like someone's been stabbed by... by, um, I think this is blokey over the road. And it's something to do with me because I'm... It's not because I'm the medium, it's because I'm Scottish. It's something to do with my nationality. Because they're showing me tartan. He's ripping, he's ripping... Oh, yeah, I'm okay. I'm all right. It's like he's ripping my flesh and then cutting my purse strings, so like I had money on my hip. Like he's cutting, so he's robbing me, essentially. Which would be the type of character he is. Highway, yeah. Okay, getting a lot of banging on the floor, tapping right underneath my feet. Fall from the oh, taste of blood in my mouth as well. Who are you picking up on in here? Much more so, this negative energy now seems to be a lot more dominant. This is this nasty Yeah, now. this nasty, dark energy. Can you hear me? There's a spirit person here now. Can you hear my voice? Can you see us? If you can, please give one loud knock. Thank you. Can you tell us, do you mean harm to David? Do you mean harm to any of us? Are you going to harm us tonight? Are you evil? 
Do you want to kill again? The main house had proved very interesting, and these clear and concise knocks that seemed to move from the floor to the wood-panelled walls were very impressive. Time then for guest medium Ian Shilato to explore these same rooms. There is a male and a female. The female I haven't got hold of yet. The male, I think, is around here somewhere. OK. And I get the impression these beds sort of show imprints sometimes. OK. I mean, like that, you know. And I think this is associated with a lady. You know what? I have got a name, Madeline. Madeline? Medel Madeline? Madeline. OK. Um, which has just been given to me. There's definitely... Mad Madeline is, is important here somewhere. Any surname with her or an initial start with? I want to say something like Jacques, or, or there's some sort of a... Jacques, or, or there's a Jacques, or there's some sort of J-A... Q, K. So activity-wise, she would do, she would sort of push down on the bed, that sort of thing. Yeah, I think. I mean, yes, yeah, she would. I mean, I think th this bed is not her bed. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. But, but so this was her space. Th this area, it's it's really quite hard to to pinpoint a certain area because there's been so much refurbishment okay. in here. Um, so can we move yeah, on and just see? If, I mean, I'll try and tune onto this this lady a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Now, this room here, I think, is, is pretty active. Right. Um, by I think it's acted by a gentleman mm -hmm. who stands over there, just behind you. Mm -hmm. um, someone who stands like this. It's a bit of a corny pose, but, you know, there's a lot of... I want to do that. I've got boots on up mm -hmm. to here. The way it's portrayed to me uh, before was, was sort of like a... Um, I suppose the best, the best word to say for a sort of everybody to understand is a cavalier, OK? Um, he is active in this house, so I think that he will be able to perform for us this evening. Four centuries after its construction, just how many souls roam this part of Keatley, and just how frightening will the next few hours prove at East Riddleston Hall? What was that? That was a dog, like a dog about to attack. <gasps> it was. <laughs> Most Haunted has returned to West Yorkshire once more, with our focus firmly set on capturing any evidence of the paranormal activity that is said to continually haunt every corner of East Riddleston Hall. Is this a guide? <laughs> that was footsteps on the stairs. I saw someone on the stairs. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? The main talking point of David's earlier walk around had been his sensing of a dark and dangerous entity that worried even the medium. So along with Ian and John Dibley, David decided to give the Great Barn a second try, but with only night vision cameras to guide their way. You would have thought you'd get rats in here, wouldn't you? I'd imagine. Yeah. Maybe. Does anyone here have anyone's... That's got to be a bat. That has to be. It's got to be a bat, I reckon. It wasn't that more, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Don't tell about the bats in here. I shall look at it. Come on, if there's anyone here, any former owners of these implements. Oh, what the f was that? Oh, oh, what was that? It sounded like something escaping across the floor, didn't it? Yeah. I have a feeling. They'll have just been joined by something else. It's just moving around this space, so... Don't hide yourself in the shadows. I keep getting an odd scent. 
odd scent. Yeah, like a, I can't put my of, finger on what the what? smell is, but it, I could, it had a real strange smell. Is it pleasant or unpleasant? A bit nasty. Yeah, that's it. Is that in your, what, in your mind's no. eye? Shh. What? Sort of like a scratch and a shuffle, wasn't it? Mm. What was that? What? Did you hear a growl? I heard, I thought, I did hear... But was it, it wasn't your distant? stomach, was it? No, 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 I tell you. It wasn't distant, it wasn't... No, it was right there, it was like a... Having heard that David was feeling unusually jumpy, I head in totally the opposite direction and let Kieran, Richard, John Dibley and both Ians deal with the bats in the barn, whilst my group walk up to the main house. Now David, Carl, Kath, Stuart, John Gilbert and I had intended to start back in the drawing room, but en route, something suddenly changed our minds. Well. Oh, yeah, so, the vigil, we're actually going into the room where we were all threatened earlier. Um, oh, there's myself. What was that? What was that? That sounded like a dog. It did. Oh, there's myself. What was that? That sounded like a dog. It did. Like a dog about to attack. It was. What the f was that? That was footsteps on the stairs. I heard a dog. I no, heard a dog. That was like a growl. That was like a growl by the side of Stuart. I didn't oh, hear it. I did. I did. I did, I did. I I did, did it all the way here. Yeah. I heard, I heard that sound beforehand. It's you. When well, you were coming these listen, bloody listen, haunted listen, places. Guy, no, this is good. This listen, is... guys. Is that you? No, it's not me. It's around me. You're joking. <laughs> You're joking, Carl. It's not me, I'm standing still, look at my feet. It's walking, it's walking. What was that? Oh, that growl? I heard that. You're joking. No, I heard a growl right by us. I know it sounds silly, but can we get off the stairs? It's more active. It's definitely more active up here. Yeah. Let's stand still and see if we can still hear those taps. I think... Oh! Here we go. That was on the stairs. Okay. There is no dog in the premises, is there? They don't have, like, a no. gun. No. So who's whispering? Who's whispering? No one. Did you hear that loud bang? And also, I've just heard while you've been talking, Carl, two heels on the stairs. On the stairs. Did you hear that? What? Oh. What? I swore I just heard a, a, a somebody breathing out. Oh. Is it this man? That would be the man. What was that? What was that? That was something there? downstairs, or, or was it? No, there? it was through there. Oh, you know what I'm going in there. You're going in there. Hey, 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 hey. What? Don't believe in us. An I'm getting an association with a woman that was locked up here a long time ago. A name with her? Um, not yet, no. Me? Richard's right in front of you. I'm here. Can you see that? See so the hole in the wall? Just next to the post there. The white thing? Yeah, next to that post there. Please try and make contact with us. I'm getting a tight, tight sensation around my throat. Really? Whether it's to do with this lady. Yeah, um. Please, if you don't want these people on your bed, I know you're there and I can see what you're doing. Try harder. These people need a bit more. They need a bit more. Touch them. I feel like something's going around my neck. You all right? You're all right. You're all right. You're all right, Kev. 
I really felt like something was creeping around, and as I said it again, and then it went. Pff. It's like feathers. She's affected all her throats, isn't it? And I wonder why. Mind you, she's died of starvation. That's why. Go on, please try something else. Touch, touch the person on the bed. Touch Carla's on the bed. Did she? Someone just touched my hand. I felt something really light. But it could have been. Do it again. Touch his hand again. Oh, someone's touching my ear. Do you know, I knew she was going to touch your ear. She said to me, I'm going to touch his ear. She's like she's saying it worked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, okay, okay. I'll tell you about it. All right, okay. Shit. That was thrown with real force, that was. Where's Kath? She's behind yeah. me. Yeah, true. Shit. Do you know I don't even want to go over there? Huh? I actually don't even want to go over there. The trouble is it could be anything. I mean, there's nothing down there. Again, yeah. Wasn't it? yeah. If there's anyone here or any assholes present, if you don't want us to be here, then let us know in no uncertain terms. Did you just growl then, Carl? Sorry? Somebody made it. Somebody Did you just I do a big growl? Oh, growl. Growl, no. That was right the Did you not just go... <sighs> no, I went... <sighs> I heard it. Oh, my... That was right at the side of me. I didn't growl. It was. It was a growl. <laughs> Did you just growl then, Carl? Sorry? It's getting closer, isn't it? <sighs> Can you hear it? What was that? What was that? There was, there was a, uh, something from out here. I keep getting real nausea, like I'm actually going to be sick, and then it goes away and comes and goes. Right, that was right at the back of your bed and Kath, that. It was right over there. What was that? That was a child. Yeah, it was like a little... It was like a kid. Yeah. What's the matter? What's the matter? I just doing? see something behind Stuart. What? What have you seen? It's like a white shape go behind Stuart. What? Was, was that someone's that? stomach? Was that? Was that your stomach? No. No, that wasn't anyone. No, was it mine? What? Was that someone's stomach? Was that? Was that your stomach? No. No, that wasn't anyone. No, was it mine? That wasn't mine. What the f was that? It was a moan. That, that was... To me, it sounded like it came from the way that was through there. And it got yeah. the that Do that again, whoever you are. There it is. What the f is that? There it is. What the f is that? It's the same noise. Yeah. Was that a baby? Oh, Did yeah. you pick it up, John? Yeah. That is a child, isn't it? Yeah, that was human, that's not an animal. Did you get that? Yeah. It's really cool. There's someone right here, right, yeah, right, right. It's like almost. I'm telling yeah. you, it's like someone, someone stuck the face right here. Oh. I'm not liking it at all. Can you Edward, don't be scared of the big man. Come towards us. Make a noise. Yeah, I did. 
I'm not liking what I'm hearing. As audibles go, these were all very clear, but even now, none of us, even Soundman John, can explain their source. I'm sure, however, that you have an answer. What do you think? What was that? That sounded like a dog. What was that? There it is. And as if our nerves weren't frayed enough, we decided to venture back upstairs, only to make a stunning discovery in the great chamber. The cradle's moved. Oh, it has. Is that what maybe the noise was? They mean the, the, the thing rocking? That could, yeah. It sounded like it was more than just a knock, wasn't it? It was like a, a rock. Before we left this room earlier on, we'd all seen David place the cradle back in its position next to the bed. So had we heard it rock itself into a different position from downstairs? And all in a room that Kath had found to be particularly uncomfortable. But is danger only isolated indoors, or do other demons dare to manifest in the many dark corners of East Riddleston Hall? John, can I ask you how you feel about me? I just think I feel. As you enter the grounds of East Riddleston Hall, few can be fully aware of the dangers that lie in wait. The main house has witnessed a horrible death brought about by infidelity and imprisonment. While these calm waters once witnessed the tragic deaths of a woman as well as a young boy. But for our final vigil, I chose to join Carl, Kath, Stuart, John Gilbert and medium David Wells in the Great Barn that had already given us some serious cause for concern. Something's given me a earful of verbal abuse. Um, just say what it is. What's it saying? Just absolute filth. It's just you, mother f Really? Bastard, yeah. And here is right, John? Right, John, what's the matter? I'm really dizzy and weak. Oh, right. you, I'm, right, I'll just point at you and you, you, you weren't... You were all over the place. You're right. You're right. Just put your weight on me. Yeah. I'm really weak. You, look, you looked awful there for a second. You almost felt like you were just going to go. Do you want to get out for a bit? He's going. He's going to go. I can see. Now let me let me stay in. You tell you tell us if you if I will do. I'll lean up against this. I just I'm getting like you. I want to feel. I want to feel what they want me to feel. John, can I ask you how you feel about me? I'm not sure. I don't feel as warmly as I normally do. Mm. If you really want to know. Why, why do you say that? Well, if he's using John as a vehicle, I know he hates me, absolutely despises me. <clears throat> There's something in you that would, would never hurt me. I mean, I know that. So, you know, I'm not... I'm just more concerned for you, really, that, you know... How do you feel, John? John? John. How do you think I feel? If you tell me, I wouldn't ask if you... If... Oh, f standing there looking at me. John, we're looking at you because we're concerned for you, that's all. All right, mate. No, John, okay. we're just looking at you, we're concerned for you. Tell you what, we're just going to walk you outside. Stuart, 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 can handle it. Which way are we going? Why are you holding me? I'm holding you because we're taking you outside. Okay. Duck your head under this. Is that his boom? Take his boom off. I've got his boom. There's growling behind them. What? Right. We, can, we can hear growling. Right, let's get John out first. If there's something growling, I don't want... John, come underneath here. Go down. 
No, down. Come on, John. Come down. On, down. I'm not a Dog. You're not a dog. You're not a dog. Just go down under this. It's fine. Okay. Okay. Go on this way. Just stay there. It's fine. It's fine. So you were hearing growling? Yeah. Mm, both heard it. It wasn't that. It was like an electric thing going on. Oh, no, it. it wasn't that. It was like a... With Kath and I holding both cameras, David's description of the growl was suddenly interrupted by a violent outburst from John just outside the barn. This outburst and the behaviour in the build-up to it was certainly strange because John is one of the crew's more gentle souls. He later viewed this footage during which his audio equipment lost sound and was shocked to see what had happened and also worried that he could remember very little of this 10-minute sequence of events. We ended where we began, in the Great Barn, that offers every possible spine-chilling fright imaginable. A place that, even in daylight, David had said felt dark and dangerous, and that may have accounted for the irrational outbursts witnessed later in the night. And with the main house literally jumping with bumps and frights, we felt that our night's work had provided plenty to ponder. There's something about the place, even when we arrived, it seemed dark, it seemed ominous. And I think that that, that sort of fear that everyone had got tended to stay with us right through the session, certainly when it got dark. And it was a scary place. What makes this phenomenon more interesting than some of the other locations is the people that it happened to. At one point during the investigation, John Gilbert actually experienced some phenomena when he was part of a vigil in the barn. He experienced anger, paranoia, which led to aggression. Stop it! Help me! Get up! The difficulty in trying to establish whether this is paranormal phenomena is the questioning and the focus that appeared to happen very quickly as soon as somebody realised that John had quite an angry expression. Are you all right, John? Very John, good. what's the matter? I'm just really dizzy and really I'm sorry, I just pointed at you and you, you, you weren't... You're all over the place. You're right. And that would only heighten any sort of emotion that John may have felt at the time. What makes the experience more significant is the actual physical aggression that he showed when he was taken out of the barn. Another person who appeared to be the focus of a paranormal attack, for want of a better word, was Kath. I feel like something's going around my neck. Even from a sceptical point of view, you have to assume it actually happened to her. There was no play acting at all, there was no role playing. Something physically affected her. All in all, the investigation at East Riddleston was fascinating because of the experiences that a number of people had, also fascinating because of the information that David Wells came up with, and certainly a location that I know the team enjoyed thoroughly. But the biggest debate relates to this lifelike shape and these extraordinary whining sounds. What was that? That sounded like a dog. What was that? Was that? Was that? There it is. Questions I know that Kieran is still trying to answer, and one that means we leave East Riddleston Hall still shrouded in mystery. Sleep tight.